Hello, everyone. My name is Sue Obeidi, and I am the director of the Hollywood Bureau at the Muslim Public Affairs Council. MPAC's Hollywood Bureau changes the narrative of Muslims in the entertainment industry so that audiences see Muslims as vital contributors to creating social and cultural change in America and around the world. Welcome to the inclusion, representation, and making progress with NBC's medical drama, Transplant. Today's panel is in partnership with ATX Television Festival. First, I want to start by thanking our colleagues at NBC Universal for seeing the great potential and impact of a series like Transplant. This is NBC's first series with a Muslim lead. And in this moment in our collective history, we need a series like Transplant, which elevates the voices and stories of an underrepresented community. We look forward to many, many more series like this from NBC and others. Congratulations to NBC and NBC Universal International Studios, Sphere Media, CTV, and the creators and the creative team on Transplant. And with that, I will turn it over to ATX's Director of Programming, Jennifer Morgan, to say a few words and to introduce our moderator. Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. I'd like to say a quick thank you to Sue and our friends at Impact's Hollywood Bureau for including us in today's event. And of course, to NBC and the cast and creatives of Transplant for making this panel possible. For those of you who might not be familiar with ATX, we are a celebration of all things TV. From reunions and premieres and script readings to one-on-one -on -one conversations and topical ones that dive deeper into the how and why of TV. And hosting physical and now virtual year-round events, we've been fortunate to have opportunities to partner with critical organizations like IMPAC and to highlight shows like Transplant, that are taking concepts like representation and inclusion and making them real through specific and meaningful storytelling. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce our moderator for today's conversation, Dr. Evelyn Al-Sultani. Dr. Al-Sultani is an associate professor in the Department of American Studies and Ethnicity at the University of Southern California. She's the author of Arabs and Muslims in the Media, Race and Representation After 9-11, and recently co-authored the Obeidi Al-Sultani Test with IMPACT's own Sue Obeidi, to help Hollywood improve representations of Muslims. Dr. Asutani, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you for the introduction, Jennifer, and thanks to MPAC, NBC Universal, and ATX for inviting me to moderate this panel. I'm excited for the opportunity to speak with the writer, actors, cultural producer, and cultural consultant for the TV show Transplant on NBC. Given that I've been researching and writing about representations of Arabs and Muslims in US television for over 15 years, I watch a lot of TV. Historically, representations of Muslims have been stereotypical, one-dimensional, and offensive. However, transplant is refreshing and groundbreaking. Dr. Bashir Hamid is a Syrian Muslim refugee trying to establish his career as an ER doctor in North America. It is unusual for a show to have a Muslim lead. It joins a handful of recent shows such as FBI on CBS, starring Zico Zaki and Rami on Hulu, starring Rami Youssef. The Los Angeles Times included Transplant on its list of the 15 shows to watch this fall. And the Wall Street Journal called it the best medical show on television. If you have not seen the show, Transplant will air throughout the fall on Tuesdays at 10 p.m. on NBC. Sue Obeidi of MPAC and I created a test to assess representations of Muslims. We were inspired by other tests, such as the Bechtel test that measures representations of women, the Rousseau test that measures LGBTQ representations, and the Duvernay test that measures racial representations. Our test is called the Obeidi Al-Sultani test, and it was published in The Hollywood Reporter in August. It consists of five criteria, and I'd like to put transplant to the Obeidi Al-Sultani test. So the first criterion, is that the project that includes a Muslim character does not reproduce or reinvent old tropes like terrorism, but rather explores new stories and new contexts. Transplant explores a new story, the life of a Syrian refugee doctor. Bashir was a combat surgeon in Syria. His 12-year-old sister lived in and out of refugee camps. They lost their parents in the war, both of whom were doctors. Dr. Bashir Hamid is initially unable to get a job as a doctor, then when he does, he can't get official papers to prove his credentials. We see him on FaceTime helping the White Helmets, volunteers who rescue civilians from bombings in Syria. 
It offers unusual insight into the experiences of being a refugee. Transplant passes the first criterion. The second criterion is that the project that includes a Muslim character has a Muslim identifying writer on staff to ensure that Muslim cultures, religion, characters, and storylines are being portrayed accurately. On Transplant, Sami Khan is one of the writers on the show, and Dr. Khalid al Malaji is a cultural consultant on the show, and both of them are here with us today. You can tell by watching Transplant that the team is well informed and it passes the second criterion of the Obedi al Sultani test. The third criterion is that the Muslim character is not solely defined by their religion. Religion can be part of the character's backstory, but should not be their entire story. This is incredibly refreshing about Transplant. Bashir is Muslim and his faith is part of his identity as opposed to his entire identity. Transplant passes the third criterion. The fourth is that the Muslim character has a strong presence and the character is essential to the story arc and has a rich and clearly defined backstory as opposed to just being in the background. On Transplant, the leading character is Muslim. So Transplant passes the fourth criterion. The fifth criterion is that Muslim characters are portrayed with diverse backgrounds and identities. What this means is that there are diverse identities to explore among Muslims, African-American Muslims, Indonesian Muslims, in addition to Arab and South Asian Muslims. There are also diverse experiences to explore. In Transplant, Bashir is not the only Muslim character. Viewers get to know his sister, Amira. We also get to know his friend, Khalid, who is an undocumented immigrant from Libya and who therefore has a very different experience from Bashir, who's a doctor. Given that we get to know Bashir, Amira, and Khalid, we are exposed to a diversity of Muslim experiences and Transplant passes the fifth criterion. I'd like to congratulate Transplant on passing the Obedi al Sultani test. And this is not just about passing a cute test. Studies have shown that viewers are more likely to support restrictions on Muslim civil rights and wars in Muslim countries when repeatedly exposed to Muslim stereotypes. The work of creating diverse stories on television is so important in shaping our perceptions, our policies, and our realities. Having said that, I will introduce the panel. I'm going to, after I introduce them, I'm going to ask them a few questions, and then we'll take questions from the audience, and you can place your question in the chat. I'd like to introduce Joseph Kay, the creator and executive producer on Transplant. Prior to Transplant, he was showrunner on the CBC drama, This Life. Sami Khan is an Academy Award nominated producer and director. He serves as writer and consulting producer on Transplant. Dr. Khalid al is a Syrian doctor, humanitarian, public health expert, and health informatician based in Canada. He serves as a cultural consultant on Transplant. Hamza Haq was recognized by the Hollywood Reporter as a rising star in Canada. He has an impressive array of television and film credits to his name. Originally born in Saudi Arabia to Pakistani parents, he moved to Ottawa, Canada as a child with his family. He portrays series lead, Dr. Bashir Hamid, whose immigrant story is at the heart of the show. Aisha Issa is an award-winning bilingual actress born and raised in Montreal. She portrays Dr. June Curtis, whose fierce determination and drive to prove herself as a surgeon belie a softer, more self-effacing side to her character. Thank you all so much for being here. Everyone can turn their cameras on so we can see you. And we are going to start having a conversation and I'll kick it off with the basics. Joseph, what made you want to create a show about a Syrian refugee? Could you tell us what the inspiration was behind the concept? You're muted, Joe. Hi, hi. <laughs> yes, firstly, thank you to MPAC and to ATX for hosting this and thank you for uh, the introduction. And I was very interesting hearing about the test and I'm so uh, honored and glad that we passed it. <laughs> um, so, um, what was the inspiration? Well, I had the idea for the show um, in early 2017. There had been a presidential election in the United States where the subject of immigration had been weaponized in a way that I think many of us thought was upsetting. And so like so many people, I was watching that and um, wanted to find a way to um, write about it. And I wanted to do that 
um, in a way that wasn't inherently political, but that was going to build empathy for the subject matter. And so that has that is what I was thinking about at the same time in Toronto, at that time where I was living, there was a quite a bit, um, you, you could find quite a bit of news about the, what was going on in Syria and the uh, Syrians who'd come to Toronto through the specific program that we have here that brings Syrians over. And, uh, and the sort of third thing that was happening is I'd been doing a lot of reading about the uh, peril of uh, international medical graduates who come to North America and want to uh, work. And it's um, unbelievably difficult for their skills to uh, translate, uh, not in a day-to-day -day way, but to get credentialed, particularly so in Canada. It's challenging in the US, but it's even, people don't really realize it's even harder in Canada. And so I, I realized that um, here was an opportunity to do all of the things that I wanted to do and begun thinking about the character of, of Bashir, a Syrian refugee who had been in Canada and had yet to qualify and um, coming to tell his story in a way that built empathy for his experience, that, put it, um, that afforded as much humanity as we could possibly fit in to the show uh, to dramatize his experience. And I absolutely remember being in a pitch meeting and describing the concept behind the show and saying that the character, a character like Bashir, so this was 2017, and I, and I remember saying a character like Bashir had never been the lead of his own network drama before, particularly one that is procedural. And I said, it's 2017, that's preposterous. We, we, we should do this now. And that worked. Thanks, Joseph. Staying on the topic of portraying a Syrian refugee, I'm wondering if Hamza and Aisha, if the two of you can speak about the significance of being part of a show that's featuring the story of refugee and immigrant experiences. Hamza. Um, yeah, just like it was so important to, to, to tell the story properly. You know, like the fact that like when I first met with Joe about the show, you know, in general, I was just excited that it was being made and I'm just like, all right, cool. Like a, 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 a good story, a show that I would want to watch um, about Muslims highlighting this very uh, relevant thing that's happening and, you know, that had been happening for like eight years and that it's continuing to happen. And we're finally starting to tell a story about it. And it's being done in Canada and the dude's the lead. Like this is this is incredible. You know what I mean? It could have been really easy to make the lead like the white journalist covering the story of the Syrian refugee doctor, but like to take it in, um, in, you know, in this direction, it was just so great. So actually getting the opportunity uh, to do it was phenomenal. And I think the drone note throughout the entire experience was that I just had to make sure that I did justice to it. That was the most important thing. Um, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to diminish the experience at all. I wanted to do as truthful a job as I as I could, and I'm I'm grateful that people are um, are seeing the, all the things that uh, you know that Joe talked about about building humanity and building empathy because uh, those are you know those are huge aspects of what will allow us to uh, you know Muslims to continue to tell our stories in a meaningful way. Thank you, Aisha. Um. When I first um, heard the concept of the show, I was excited, but to be completely honest, I was skeptical only because um, I feel like there've been so many letdowns, not necessarily when it comes to Muslim representation, but when it comes to representation in general. Um, and you know, uh, there have been attempts made that were done lazily and um, in ways that I, to me, I felt were incomplete. And I always find that just very frustrating. Um, but having been said, once I started getting the material and once I started meeting the people that I was working with, and um, it was like a process that continued to unfold as I, as I, um, as I got on set and, 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 you know, as we filmed and stuff. But when I realized how committed they were to the authenticity of the project um, and that everybody that they, they hired to, to put this together was on the same page and that they were so consistent about it. Um, I started feeling really good about it and really excited about it. Um, but I definitely ran the gamut of like, oh, I really hope I'm not going to be a part of something that ultimately is going to end up feeling problematic. And I ended up feeling like, like, this is actually like 
incredible. Like this is incredible. And, you know, uh, you spoke briefly about as part of the test, the fact that um, uh, uh, Bash's religion is part of who he is. And obviously that influences his experience. And of course, the fact that he's Syrian and he's a refugee also influences that, but that's not all he is. And I just think that uh, the writing team and, and Joe did such an amazing job at really making the humanity the focus and, and that that allows for um, people to connect um, and to take the time to be able to sit and understand, right, a, another perspective. So um, yeah, I'm very proud to be part of this project for sure. Thanks, Aisha. It's interesting to hear this fear. Oh my gosh, what if this flops? Because there are a lot of good efforts out there and then something about it makes it flop. And I think that perhaps having Sammy and Dr. Khalid on the team makes a difference. I wanted to ask both of you, Dr. Khalid and Sammy, uh, if you could even tell us what does a cultural consultant do compared to a cultural producer and uh, what do your roles entail on the show? How did you help shape the vision? Sammy, do you want to go first? Sammy, you can go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, so I, I'm, I was a writer and story editor on the first season, consulting producer on the, the second season. Um, but, uh, you know, I have to agree with what Aisha was saying. I think when I first heard about the project, I was a little nervous. And then I read the script. Uh, Joe and, and Tara Woodbury, the executive producer of the show, sent me the script and I had never I'd never seen a Canadian TV show like that. Um, I'd never seen an American TV show that, uh, you know, front and center, a Muslim character um, that wasn't a terrorist. Um, and then I got to work with Joe for a week or so where we started talking about where the first season might go before a green light. And I got an inkling of Joe's process because like a big part of the success of season one, I feel like is that Joe doesn't, you don't need to, the people of color on the show don't need to educate Joe or, or Tara or Rachel Langer, another key writer, um, or even the other writers on the show. They've already thought about this. They've already talked about that. And in my own experience, that's a real problem when you're trying to like, the, you know, people have never worked with people of color before, Muslims, African-Americans, whatever. And there is this burden where you have to educate you know, it, it sets up a strange dynamic, but Joe had already done all that work. You know, he's a Jewish kid, grew up as an outsider in the prairies in, in Canada. Um, and that process, that sort of inclusive process where it wasn't that I was like, I mean, I joke that I'm the Muslim writer on the show, but I, I wasn't, right? Joe didn't treat me like that. And uh, he, he needed me to be more than that because, you know, it's a TV show. It's like, you need all of your cogs firing at, you know, on all cylinders, you can't just do one thing. Um, and I think that's a real credit to Joe as a creator and, and that journey, you know, that journey of building the show and being, uh, being open to being wrong, you know? So it's rare that you see that, that kind of courage. Um, and I think that's part, of, that's part of the success of the show. And that's why I wanted to work on it. Dr. Howard, thank you, Sammy. First, uh, I, would, I would like to thank the, the whole team, Hamza, and everyone. Uh, you've done a wonderful work. Honestly, it's amazing. Um, um, I think, uh, yeah, basically, I'm one of the like many. I think that the team have got like a lot of feedback on what's happening there in in, in Syria, the life of of those who spread all over the place, and the different stories, the different backgrounds, the different ethnicities, like everybody has a different story. Um, maybe uh, uh, the my background, the work that I've done there before I came into to, to Canada, like uh, exposed me or like allowed me to, to be in contact with the different people, the huge number of people working on different things in, uh, in, the, in the crisis in Syria. So that allowed me to honestly, when I, when I arrived here and the uh, Terra reached out to me and uh, we start talking and talking and talking. I was like uh, every second, like uh, dropping a, like a, a story of a different person, a different uh, story, a different like uh, accident. And uh, because it was all here, and uh, I didn't think that I like, I've like 
talk that much <laughs> before. Like I, I was trying to like the, the whole the, the whole last like six years, I was like receiving, receiving and you know, working and working and working. That was the first time that I was like I stepped back a little bit and I start talking about what happened. And uh um, you know, um I'm I'm like many uh, physicians who left uh, Syria. Um uh, some left earlier in the uh, crisis and uh, I've been there for six years. Uh, the last, uh, the first one year is exactly on the front lines and then between Turkey and, uh, and, and Aleppo and then in the, in the, in the areas in, the, in Syria where it was like, uh, we can move and uh, work. Um, we've done a lot of work. With, uh, we've done work with a lot of amazing people, lost a lot of friends, a lot of relatives, a lot of people who were working there just because they were doctors. Uh, maybe be, uh, some, uh, some of them, they were there just motivated by the, the beliefs that they were like there for freedom and uh, they want to fight for that cause. And, uh, but simply like uh, the doctors, they were there just because they were doctors and they want just to help. So uh, we worked a lot on like uh, building underground hospitals. We were leading immunization campaigns. Um, I was there also for like we established uh, systems to serve like uh, to 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 monitor uh, communicable diseases in in this region. Uh, a lot of work and uh, we that we couldn't like do without like a those people that they were there and were fighting to, 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 to do this. So uh, uh, I think um, simply uh, people who spread all over the world from Syria, uh, they had different stories and they shared these different stories with everyone. And uh, like every community and every society and nation, uh, you cannot, you can't take a stereotype about religion, about ethnicity from one person from a group of persons. You need to look at the whole picture. And uh, this is what you, honestly, I can see this uh, clearly in, 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 in transplant and uh, exactly in badge character. Like uh, you can see that this person is trying to tell the story of different people. It's not like a one person story. And uh, it's amazingly we're, we're drawn and, 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 uh, and he was there and uh, honestly uh, I was watching and uh, I was trying to see like how it will go now. How is he like trying to deliver one message or it's uh, different messages that you will end up stepping back and say, okay, this is a normal life like my life. I'm a North American person who's looking at this person who lives his life who a lot of like, uh, you know, conflicts and love and, and different things. And it's not like one single target message that I they, they, that they are trying to to, to deliver. So uh, it's lovely, and of course, absolutely, it's not only this. It's the story of a community that ho the host community. They were different, like you know, the level of response. The the host community they were different all over the world, and how they accepted those people. Mm -hmm. So here you see the inclusiveness. The, the, the amazing, amazing optimization of those people skills to get their skills and like uh, actually utilize these skills to build the successful and prosperity of those host communities. So it's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, it's really uh, fascinating to hear Sammy say he's a writer, not the Muslim writer, because you hear about that a lot in Hollywood writing rooms, if there is a Muslim writer at all. And then to hear how Dr. Holland's experience is actually informing the show as a refugee yourself and as a doctor yourself. And I think that's extraordinary. My next question is about casting. I wanted to ask about the process of casting. And I also wanted to ask your thoughts, and I'm seeing some of this in the chat right now as well, about mm -hmm. casting a Pakistani to play an Arab. And if there's concern about the audience not knowing the difference between Arabs and South Asians, since there tends to be a conflation and confusion around these identities. Joseph? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to the process of casting Hamza. <clears throat> he, um, like Hamza and I had worked together on a prior show and um, he, and in, it, we had created a character really together on that show. Uh, he was, um, his, very quickly his, his arc was, it was gonna be having a green card marriage with a Canadian. And the, the, when he auditioned for the part, 
uh, we, we, we were very early on in the stage and what I wanted to do was build where that character was from around the actor who was gonna play him. And Hans is the kind of actor that when he comes in a room and auditions, you know, he's got the part. So we met and we started talking about the character and in the relationship that he and I developed, we just had a great sort of quickly, a very easy rapport. And, and we worked together to sort of build this character's backstory. And a lot of it came from Hamza personally. So when I uh, started thinking about Transplant and I had very recently worked with Hamza on this, I started talking to him about the character. You know, Hamza, I knew wasn't Syrian, but um, has been an immigrant his entire life, is a Muslim living in the West and um, has a lot to say on the subject. And I wanted to talk to him about it. And he wanted to talk to me about it, like he said earlier. And the idea was always that, um, that we were gonna audition uh, for the part, um, which of course we did. And we, um, so, you know, we, we had been talking to Hamza and we know him. Um, and we, of course, as the show moved along, um, we, are, we did as wide, a, as, as, wide a po as possible casting net. Hamza knew that was happening. Um, we auditioned um, every Syrian actor, every Lebanese actor, every Egyptian actor, and as many actors as we could, um, and looked at that process completely realistically and honestly. And at the end of the day, um, Hamza is just a beautiful and perfect actor. And, and we had to cast him because, um, you know, and it was not just my decision, it's the decision of um, CTV and the producers at Sphere and NBC Universal, and everybody was on the same page with it. And so we, you know, we were aware of, um, we were aware that there might be a conversation around um, where he's from, and I'll, I'll let him speak to this too. But what I will say is that we were always going to take an overall honest and careful approach to representation on the show. And so we had always said to ourselves, we're not gonna take any shortcuts anywhere. Built into the DNA here is like doing the work and doing it honestly and doing it right. And if we do that, um, then even if some people have questions about where Hans is from, then you know, we're, we're doing it right. And so um, that's how we felt. Thank you, Joseph, for providing that context and background on it. I'd love to hear from you, Hamza. Um, yeah, I feel like, especially in today's day and age, and I myself am guilty of this, there's this very like quick like shoot from the hip um, uh, like mentality towards representation and stuff like that, where it's like, okay, cool, like if this person's not from this region or this whatever, and, and, I, and I understand to a certain degree, um, like should, you know, should Leonardo DiCaprio play Middle Eastern? No, he shouldn't. You know what I mean? Is he one of the best actors out there? Cool. You know what I mean? But like, it just, it just doesn't, like that kind of thing doesn't add up. But in this thing, like when I like I was in the running early to be to be bash. And then they told me the process that they were gonna go through. Like I was I, I was given um whatever, I might get in trouble, whatever. but I was given a test option. Like this is if you get the contract, this is what it's gonna look like. And it looked amazing. I was just like, yeah, this is so dope, cool. And the next day they were just like, listen, so we think it would be irresponsible to go any further if we didn't audition every possible Syrian actor. Like if we're gonna give it to anybody, it should be a Syrian actor and let's do that. And admittedly, the part of me who had been unemployed for a good amount of time and that has bills to pay and that just wanted to tell the story was upset. But if there was a Pakistani actor out there, or a role out there that I didn't even get to read for, I would be pretty, you know, I would be pretty upset. So the fact that everybody else auditioned that's all well and good, but other people have gotten Pakistani parts and like who weren't Pakistani. And I'm not salty about that. The fact that I got the opportunity to do it, great. If somebody else can do better justice to that character, I think ultimately, like if you can do justice to a character and you can bring that level of empathy and that level of understanding towards the role, like yes, not Middle Eastern, was born and raised there. And I was reminded constantly while I was over there that I'm not Middle Eastern. So this is a comp this is a conversation that I'm very used to about being told that like, yeah, just because you were born there doesn't make that make you that. I understand that fully, but my understanding of it is what um, I, I feel like allows me to be in any position to try to tell the story. And my, and, and my commitment to my work is why I got the part. And I'm kind of like, I kind of don't want to apologize for that anymore. You know what I mean? It's just like, hey man, like I, I work really hard at what I do. 
at least watch the show first before you admonish it for casting a Pakistani as a Syrian. If the story is being told, cool. If once you've watched the show, you're still mad about it, let's have a conversation about it still. But to be just like, I'm not going to watch the show because X, Y, Z. I, I understand that too, but you're missing out on a great show, you know. Thanks, Hamza. I do think I appreciate these answers because people want to know. And I wasn't asking you to be salty, but to have this kind of conversation because people will fall into the lines in terms of, you know, <laughs> the extent to which ethnic casting matters. And I think most would agree that not casting a white person to play the role is an improvement in itself. And, 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 now, and, and I'll just go one further to somebody who keeps on commenting about the fact that there are no Arabs in the, like, you know, in, in the process or or in, like in in the show at all I, I like this is this is just an erroneous statement you know what i mean like yes i myself in pakistani playing syrian serena who's playing um uh, uh, amira she's she's from uh, afghanistan but any other arab character yes they're not huge they're not whatever but the guy who plays saleh um who plays my friend who's in syria and stuff like that actual syrian refugee dude playing the part i've talked to him he gave me his approval for like playing the parts and he auditioned for Bash as well, told me about it. But ultimately, like the fact that to uh, return to something Joseph said in the opening remarks around your inspiration for the show. And you mentioned part of it was around the election and certain policies and wanting to speak to that. And part of the Obedi al Sultani test was in response to a shift that we noticed just in the last three or four years that there are better roles and more of a diversified sphere of representation than there was even five years ago. So I wanted to ask this question. Um, Aisha, maybe I'll start with you. If you feel like there are more interesting and visible roles today, whether it's Muslim men or Black women, uh, than there were, for example, five years ago, and if so, why do you think that is? Um, I can only really go off of what I read for and how that's changed over my career. Um, and I definitely do see a difference in uh, the variety of roles that I am able to audition for. So I feel like there was a period of time where um, my agents would kind of be like, oh, well, they didn't specify Caucasian, so I'm going to submit Aisha, you know, like it was more of that, whereas now they're kind of specifying open ethnicity um, and uh, and it's it's not so much of a risk or uh, to be to, to kind of be sub submitting me for parts that don't specifically ask for an African-American um, actress. Um, that having been said, I and I maybe, I don't know what I missed out on the last year because I've been with Transplant, right? So, um, but I have, I can't really say that I have come across a lot of other opportunity to play this deep and this layered of a character. Um, and so when you ask me if there is a change, I definitely think so. I think that there's definitely more representation on screen. I think it's very kind of fashionable and it's almost unacceptable or it's becoming less and less acceptable to, to, to not have some form of diversity. That having been said, um, having, uh, I guess, or, or not having representation, but like having diversity within the representation, I think we're still kind of working on that diversity within the representation. And, that's where I think transplant like kind of double mails it because there's there's a representation, but there's all this diversity within the representation. And that is something that I that I still don't really see that I'm coming across, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Could you speak a little bit to your character of Dr. June Curtis and what the challenges are in portraying her? She's, you know, this very strong character, but then she has this relationship with her father and this backstory. She's this expert uh, surgeon. Could you tell us a little bit about your character and the challenges in portraying her? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the challenges in, in portraying her, I mean, at the risk of sound, sounding arrogant, like they, I just feel like they wrote the character so well. And when I get the material and I read the material, it makes sense to me. I understand, I, under, I feel like I understand the character because they, 
because it's so authentic. Like the fact that she has these issues with her father really do speak to the way in which she interacts with the rest of the world. Um, it all makes sense. It, it, you know, just like Bash's character, it's just extremely <laughs> well written and they make it very difficult to, to kind of mess it up, you know? Um, so with a bit of research and, and just connecting with the material, it kind of just, it kind of just happens. I, I, I can't take too much credit for it, but I, I, I have a lot of fun with it. Um, um, I, I explore and I learn a lot of, of myself. And I can say that uh, I learn a lot through June and through the material and, and wanting to do her justice and wanting to make sure that I'm um, um, really getting her message across, if that makes sense. Um, I've done a lot of work on myself in order to be able to communicate that, right? And to be able to, to, to do that. So I, I don't wanna call it a challenge because it's been more of a blessing than a challenge. You know what I mean? Um, that's just the way I feel about it. So thank you. Does anyone else want to speak to this question of whether you think there's a something going on today in response to politics that's creating an opening for different kinds of representations? Same I think way? so. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and I mean, we have to like also credit, you know, the, the people that, you know, are alongside us and have come before us, you know, like Rami show, you know, like even a, a movie like the big sick and just what Kumail has able, been able to do with his career. And you're not necessarily a Muslim, but just a trailblazer in Ava DuVernay. And you know what she's done just with Queen Sugar, but then across the board, you know, how she moves between activism and creation and nonfiction and fiction. Um, so I think through sheer force of will, some of those creators have been able to shake things up. Um, and uh, so, and then the, on, the other, on the other side, I think there is a realization among some people that, like you said at the opening, Evelyn, there, there are consequences for the demonization in the media of certain groups of people, whether they're, you know, Central American migrants, um, whether they're Muslims, whether it's women, there are consequences to that. And, you know, you don't have to look that far back into history to see what happens when the media, you know, is twisted towards one group of people in a major industrialized country. And I think in the United States, in North America, well, in the Western world, the last few years, we've seen what happens when sort of the levers of power are controlled by people who are willing to use the, 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 the levers of power to demonize uh, groups of people. And so those, those roles of, you know, stock terrorists that, you know, my friends have played, have struggled with playing and auditioning for those roles. I know Hamza has, Aisha has, you know, struggled to break free of those sort of stereotypes. Um, and I think there's a willingness, at, at least at this very moment, I hope, you know, whatever happens in the election, you know, that people just don't forget about these issues, you know, that it's not just a, a short window of time, that, that, that these, these conversations persist um, and I have confidence that they will because of, you know, because of people like Hamza, because of creators like Joe, because of Aisha fighting for it. And then, you know, Rami and Ava and Kumail doing their thing uh, down in LA too. Thank you. I wanted to focus on the portrayal of Muslims since we are with the Muslim Public Affairs Council today. And given that what the show is doing is unprecedented. So I was wondering if we could talk about some of the nuances we see in Muslim representation on the show, uh, particularly that Bashir is Muslim, but it's not the one and only thing that's relevant about his identity, which speaks volumes with breaking with stereotypical portrayals. And uh, I think it's in the first, maybe it's in the Eid episode, uh, Bashir is asked about, does he pray? And he says, sometimes I pray five times a day, sometimes I don't pray at all. And I think many Muslims would relate to that kind of statements. And you have an Eid episode that's about the holidays, but it's not all about the holidays. It's just a day in the life and it happens to be the holiday. So I was wondering if uh, you could speak to, we'll start with you, Joseph, about how you approach the portrayal of faith in the show and what the goal was. Um, I wanted there to be faith in the show um, for more than for more than Hamza's character. Um, I, I think that, that um, sometimes television, it takes a really condescending role uh, to a viewpoint towards faith, generally speaking. Um, and uh, so I always wanted there to be faith. And I, from very early on, I mean, from conversations in Hamza and I've had, you know, a year before the show, 
we were both interested in the idea of, um, you know, the, the Muslim character who is portrayed via faith, just like non-Muslim characters have been since the dawn of film entertainment, you know, um, good at it sometimes and kind of not so good at it other times, you know, um, doesn't drink, but, you know, we show him having a relationship with a woman um, and, you know, and so, that was just really interesting to us the whole time. And that was always the goal that faith was important to him, but that he had his, he, he had his own way of coming at it. Like so many of us do and the way that we kind of make our own rules, you know, but they fit in some kind of holistic way that makes us feel good about ourselves. And that's a universal thing. And that, that quote that you excerpted um, was really important to us, to me and Sammy and to Hamza and to everyone, because we knew, um, um, that we wanted Bash to, to talk about how, how, when and how much he prays. And it was gonna be in a conversation in which his uh, colleague, Theo, who's a pediatrician and had been grown up sort of mostly an observant Christian is talking about his relationship with faith. And that we, we wrote the scene, um, we wrote the scene where he's asked that question. And then, and then we asked Hamza, we told him we were gonna have him answer the question and we wanted him to to tell us what he thought the answer would be. And he took, he said, okay, and, you know, and he took, I don't know, weeks, right? Like to really think about it. And, um, cause we were ahead of schedule, we we're that kind of room. And, um, and then he, he came back with that beautiful line, you know, and um, which to me, it's beautiful. And it's, it, it, it reflects that we were kind of, we were always doing this together. And that's something I'm really proud of. Thanks, Joseph. Hamza? Yeah, like, um, it's funny, that line itself is probably the thing that got me in the most hot water with my father, you know, but the, the funny thing is like, like the, the, when, when Bash hooks up with Vivian, like didn't care about that, you know what I mean? And, but this line about like, yeah, some days I don't pray. And my dad was just like, listen, why would they make you say that line? Like why that's, this is, this is right. And I was just like, oh, they didn't make me say that. That, that was mine. I, I came up with that one. And he was just like what what do you mean and I was just like listen you know he's just like but you know this isn't right and I'm just like I'm not interested in like <laughs> another thing that's probably gonna get me into trouble but I'm not I'm not really like as far as art is concerned like I don't really want to talk about what's right I just have to talk about what's true you know and this is the experience like this is like it's not the way it should be who's to say you know yeah like I should pray five times a day like Sammy like when was the last time you got all five in you know what I mean not to put you on the spot but that smile tells me everything I need to know right but like you know like like but like but in the sense like it's just it's just a reality that like growing up in North America like our our, our like our schools aren't aren't built around the like Islamic prayer schedule work schedules aren't been like built around that and I don't even know like any of my cousins like who like living that part of the world in Pakistan or whatever who are fully committed follow every rule down to a T. Um, so I thought that and, and it was my experience like growing up everybody that I was you know what I mean you kind of the one thing the one thing where we all draw the line is just, like no pork everything else you kind of you kind of just like you, you kind of like dip your toe into a little bit you're just like well I don't know I don't know this, I don't know you know for better or for worse I'm not saying it's right it's just true you know and and I, I felt it's important to tell that story because it's difficult to live up to the standards that we create for ourselves you know anytime we uh, as a culture are, are judgmental about anybody it's just like oh yeah he's got a great job but I heard he you know whatever you know or whatever whatever the thing is or like she had a boyfriend before she got married oh <gasps> you know worst thing in the world you know and it's just like enough with that like we do this to ourselves off camera all the time the amount of judgment we throw on each other and I thought it was important to just like hey man like you know like anybody who's like throwing judgment at me like any like aren't who's out there like I know what your kids are up to like don't make me you know what I mean like don't make me talk about it so like it's just I think it's important that Rami does a great job doing this you know what I mean like Rami has a very you know and this is somebody who's like working at trying to be better and you can't really get better unless you really, um, one, decide that it's important to you, and two, understand where you are currently. And I think it's important for us as a community to be seen on, in a public forum doing that because we're not monolithic. It's too much pressure to maintain the status quo to represent two billion people of a singular idea of what it means to be Muslim. It's just unrealistic. It's not, 
um, like it's it's just not possible. So thanks, Hans. I'm glad this is the direction we. I'm glad this is the direction we went in with the show because the last show that we did, like this life, it was very similar. He took liberties, but prayer and stuff was like really important to him. And and uh, you know that's true. That's true for me. Like I take liberties, but I I pray every day, not not five times maybe, but every day I do pray at least once or twice. <laughs> thanks, Hamza. I agree. There, the the whole point of this is that there are many ways to be Muslim, and there isn't one type. Mm -hmm. And we keep seeing the same type over and over again. So it's refreshing to have mm -hmm. this this opening through your character. I wanted to remind everyone who's watching to put any questions you have in the Q and A as opposed to in the chat. And I'm going to ask a few more questions, and then we will get to your questions. I wanted to talk about uh, Bashir's friend Khalid, who's an undocumented immigrant from Libya. And it is an unusual character. Uh, when we do see undocumented immigrants, they're usually Central American or Mexican. So it's unusual to see a Libyan undocumented immigrant portrayed on a TV show. And so I was wondering what the inspiration was for Halid's character. And I wonder if uh, who would like to speak to that? I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll say that um, the inspiration was, and maybe Sammy wants to weigh in on this too, but that. Um, we were presenting one version of um, uh, a story with Bashir's character, and we wanted just to we wanted a counterpoint. We wanted some other way into it to tell you know enough. Just we wanted a counterpoint. We want we wanted to be able to dramatize and portray different experiences, and um, he and so he was just a you know we we started thinking about that, and we kind of went we went down that road. We also wanted him to have another life, you know, we, did, we didn't want his life to only be work and, and his sister, we wanted him to have a bud and, and, and his own community. So it, it was to allow us to explore different experiences. And it started with that concept. Thanks, Jason. Dr. Hallett or Sammy, would you like to speak to that? Sammy, you can go ahead. <laughs> it's your namesake though, Khaled. Uh, I mean, what I'd say is like, we, we you know, this is before the, you know, your test, Evelyn with Sue, but there was some form of like the Bechtel test that we were trying to do where it's like, we were cognizant. And again, this is like, Joe got this, Tara Woodbury, the EP got this, Rachel Wanger, you know, Joe second on the show got this. It's like, it's problematic if the Muslim character is on, the only other Muslim character he's talking to is his, his sister, that his, 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 the way he's presented is only framed around uh, whiteness, you know? It's like all his characters, so that's why it was really important that Aisha's character existed. That was really important why uh, Khalid uh, and the show existed. Um, and uh, just to, like make a quick pivot though to the actual Khalid, like he is like a bona fide superhero. Like what the, uh, what Dr. al Nalaji does is like, he is a superhero. And I, I don't think like the, the, um, the, you know, whatever cursory sense we can get of it, but like so much of that soul of what he does and what he's been through in his life, both during the revolution um, and during the war and now is like heroic, is like super heroic. You know, there are rare people who have that energy and, you know, we're making a TV show and hoping, you know, people like it and, you know, hopefully changing people's perceptions about Muslims. But Dr. al is like literally fighting for his people and, you know, with every ounce of his being. Um, and, you know, he puts us all, the rest of us to shame, <laughs> to be honest. Oh, no. <laughs> no, Sammy, honestly, uh, for, for me and for people, at least in North America, you are the heroes. So people, they were waiting such a work that you've done. Honestly, like all of you, like they, uh, I, I watch a lot of series and this was different. The message was different and the way in delivering this message was amazing. The I think it's the first time to deliver this me message in this way uh, and multiple messages. It's a mix as Hamza said and all of you said, like uh, it's, uh, it could be not the right, but it's the truth. So basically, uh, life it has everything uh, people have like from all religions have different backgrounds have different mentalities have different mistakes in their life have mystics different 
nice and amazing things in their lives. So why not like just laying it out like, like this way, that's like normal way, an easy way that it's acceptance for such a, like a, such a society in North America. So I believe uh, you are the heroes. I believe that the work that you have done are, is amazing. And uh, thank you again, uh, uh, presenting different background, different uh, stories, experiences was what was one of the factors of the success of this work. Thank you, Dr. Howard. Aisha, I know you have to leave us shortly. And I wanted to see if you wanted to add anything on any of these topics, whether it's about portraying the undocumented Libyan or about the significance of having a Muslim character who doesn't fit this very rigid idea. Um, I just, I guess I'll just echo quickly what everyone else has said, which is, I mean, I'm sitting here and I'm smiling and my heart is full because I'm just hearing everybody talk about it. And it just reminds me of that kind of synergy that I felt on set working with these individuals where everybody seems to be plugged into the same idea, uh, uh, you know, and, and wanting to be moving in the same direction. But I do absolutely think, and Hamza said it perfectly, it's not about being right. It's about, you know, being real and, um, and, and, I, I just think that that's just so valuable because right is something, it might be an ideal and it might be something that people chase and we all kind of have our ideals and, 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 and we chase them, but what we connect with is realness. Like that's what we're able to connect with and that's what, what pe makes people feel um, not alone. And that's what makes people feel um, uh, like they're seen. Do you know what I mean? It's that, it's that real element. And so, um, I mean, all I can really say, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'm extremely grateful to be a part of the project. Um, I'm so excited to see um, now that the foundation has been laid and the groundwork is there and, uh, you know, it, the reception is there also, it just, it opens up the world, I feel, um, as far as opportunities are concerned. And I'm just, I'm just excited to see what, what comes of all of this, but yeah. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna sneak in one last question and then we're gonna to go to uh, questions from the audience. And my last question is about the Arabic language and the use of the Arabic language in the show. It's very unusual to hear bilingual language and include Arabic on a show. Uh, so I was wondering how you incorporated Arabic in the show and why that was important to do. Um, personally, I kind of made that a deal breaker um, when we were making the show, that I, I just thought it was really important that we not shy away from that, that um, that um, because they, I, I wanted we we all wanted Bashir's character to speak Arabic when he would roughly speak Arabic because we were trying to portray the experience realistically, and um, everybody was open to it, and in, and then knowing that it had to go in and out of English uh, just to help with audiences somewhat. Um, we tried finding, the writers and I tried finding, and the actors, I think, tried finding like a natural, natural ebb and flow to when you might go in and out of, of different languages. You know, the show is the show is filmed in Montreal by a bunch of English speaking people who are dealing with a lot of French speaking people. And so everybody on set is constantly going in and out of different languages all the time. And so there is a natural way in which we we do that. And so we just tried to like use our ears and 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 um and try to and try to pay that forward with the arabic thank you does anyone else want to add to that or should i get to our audience questions all right here is the first one how do you make sure there is balance in storytelling for example balancing the story of minorities but making it understandable or relatable for everyone joseph we, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to, I mean, I think that sort of the best answer to that question is that the show is called Transplant. That the grounding force of the show is Bashir's experience. And so that is always going to be, you know, sort of chapter by chapter, step by step. That's always going to be what the, what the, what the North Star of the show is. And that we would, in building the, the stories around him and constructing his stories, we would, we would just let we would try to let theme guide us there. So if in a particular episode, wherever Bashir is in his life and what he's dealing with, we would 
look to the sort of the orbit surrounding him and try to have interplay there, to have things thematically connected, to have questions that we're asking in his life be subtly reflected in everyone else's life. And so where, where, that, where, the, where that is going to those kinds of issues organically, we go, we, we're not afraid to go. It's definitely built into the DNA of the show, but it's really all about finding the expression of, of Bashir's journey. Thank you. Does anyone else want to answer that question? Should I move on to question two? Which is, being a Muslim medical student, this show is the best study break ever. What I really like about the show thus far are both the medical cases and the instances the show addresses misconceptions about Muslims like the two Eids and praying five times a day. For Hamza Haq and Aisha Issa, what did you do to prepare for the role as a doctor? Um, well, thank you, Taymour, for asking the question. Um, I'm glad you're enjoying the show. All the best with finals and et cetera and all that does. Um, we, uh, we were all pretty equal in our uh, lack of knowledge of, <laughs> of medicine. So we were all put into a boot camp and uh, uh, we had a medical consultant. We had a, several medical consultants, but our two chief uh, consultants were um, uh, Dr. Zach Levine and super nurse uh, Mike Richardson, who uh, we went into like a two week boot camp with. Um, to learn sort of just like, oh, like, or where are we placing leads and how to put in an IV and how to perform CPR and all of these things before we did anything else, before we ever did a table read together, before we did anything, we met at medical boot camp just to be able to go through it. And that was kind of our initial bonding experience. And then every single medical procedure that you, uh, that you see on, on the show was meticulously rehearsed choreographed and practiced prior to us actually filming like a week we come in on the weekends um and uh you know these sessions were provided to us like i mean the the, the medical professionals generously donated their time and on scene on every one of these things uh, one of the extras uh was always a special skills extra so like a real nurse like a trauma nurse or er nurse or something and uh i'd also like to thank uh lauren mckinley our supervising producer who was around for uh, every single one of those uh, ran those meetings and made sure that um, we took that really seriously. And a big shout out to the writing team who went through like so much data to make sure um, all the medical terms were accurate, all the procedures were written as accurate. And um, and yeah, good job team. Uh, good job, good job to all the actors for making it look like we knew what we were doing. If you have a medical emergency and you see any was one of us on the street. Do not contact us. Do not ask us for help. We cannot, uh, legally, we cannot help you. So, yeah. Thank you. The next question I have is, is there going to be a discussion about mental health on the show? Yeah, I mean, there there is. Um, I'm trying to think of where, I guess in the US you've watched episode seven. Um, I don't wanna say any spoilers, but you know, there is a main character who's dealing with a mental health issue. And then there is an episode coming up um, in which uh, the mental health is, uh, is front and center. Um, and, you know, I think that's also something which, uh, you know, we hope to change the conversation a little bit because mental health is health. It's, it's part of medicine. And, uh, you know, I think that goes to sort of Joe's sensibility and the work, the years of work that he had put in to the show before even went into production. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, Hamza mentioned the Montreal consultants, but Dr. Petrosoniak in Toronto was like hugely important for us. And, you know, shout out to the, the healthcare workers, doctors and nurses who helped us on the show who are, you know, right now feeling the crunch again with COVID. So, you know, they're in our, in our hearts and prayers and we're thinking about them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that stuff's, my dad's a doctor too. And I think now I finally, uh, I finally uh, made it in, in his view, he understands what I do. And he actually the, the drill and the pilot, I had to remind my dad that uh, Joe and I got the idea for the drill in the head uh, from my dad. Um, and he, he, my dad actually came in with a save for I forget which episode episode two was it Joe with like some sort of thing. So it's great to be close to, to, to positions. So we were always like, milking the knowledge from them. One, one of the many things Sammy does on the show was he, he 
he was the writer always on the phone call with the doctor. The writers would come up with stuff, um, whatever medical stuff we wanted to play with. And Sammy was the writer that carried, would carry that through. He would always be on the phone call with the doctor and he would kind of quarterback all of it from like combining the story and the medicine. That was one of the many things he did and came up, saved our butts a lot, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Amazing. I have another question here, which is directed to Hamza. Did you know how to speak Arabic before playing Bashir? Nope, I still don't. Um, I, uh, I, I, I grew up in Saudi Arabia, so I grew up around the language where, you know, I'm Muslim, so I grew up reading the Quran. So I know, like I have, uh, like my muscles have developed to be able to pronounce the language. So when we had the, the Syrian consultant, we were, I worked with two, Manar and Michelin. So when they came in, I had, an, I had a, a dialect coach and an Arabic coach and they were on set just to make sure I was saying all the, all the right things, the right time. And uh, I've, I've been told that my accent is a little, uh, my Arabic accent is a little more Lebanese than Syrian, but you know, something to work on for season two. And Hamza, do you want to tell us about uh, what you're wearing? Uh, so um, uh, this is uh, like I was in South Africa and a very dear family um, friend of mine, he gave me this and just in light of everything that's been going on in Nigeria and uh, other parts of Africa, um, I just thought I'd represent uh, all the turmoil that everybody's going through. And uh, this is to um, this is the Turkestan flag, also known as the Uyghur flag, about the uh, millions of Muslims that are currently in concentration camps. Um, in China and forced to, to do labor and for many of our favorite companies. And uh, my mother actually sewed this out of uh, old uh, Zara and H&M uh, clothing um, to, uh, I, I asked her to do that and, uh, and she made this for me. So I'm just, uh, you know, um, just to draw attention to that. And if, if you're all, if, if there's any Muslims watching out there, you know, next time you're praying, say a little du'a as for our brothers and sisters who are suffering all over the world. If you're not uh, Muslim, you can still send on your good thoughts and vibes and share, uh, you know, share any news or any clippings and inform yourselves about the atrocities that are, uh, that are being committed all over the world. Thank you. My next question, it says, Thank you so much team for doing this. Will there be a season two for the show? And are you planning to shoot next year or are you facing delays due to COVID-19? Uh, yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> yes, we'll be, season two. Yeah, and we have, yeah, it's been, delayed. it's been delayed. It's gonna happen in the winter, we'll be back. But like everyone else, we're just kind of reacting day to day to what the realities of COVID mean for us, but we're coming back, yes. The next question I have is, can the cast and crew speak to their reactions of having the show air in the US and the feedback they've received? Well, I mean, for me, it's just been, first of all, it was when it aired in Canada, which it did a few months before it aired in the US, that was wonderful for us because we were, a lot of people watched and it was great. When you make something, you want people to see it and you want people to have reactions to it. Personally, I like, Either way, you know, I'm better that they like it, but I, I love that there's a conversation. And so when we learned it was going to be broadcast in the US to a much larger audience, we're going from 30 million people, 30, 35 million people to 330 something million people. And that's just what you want. And it's been really rewarding and exciting for me to read the conversation around it. You know, it's, yeah, I wanna hear nice things, but I'm liking everything that I'm hearing and interested in leaning into everything that I'm hearing, the conversation on Twitter or everywhere else. And to me, it's been really fun. Does anyone else want to speak to that, Dr. Howard? Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting, I'm waiting actually. <laughs> Why winter before? <laughs> Start before, earlier. So we are expecting like, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, you're asking uh, us about like, uh, specifically uh, the question about the like, next seasons or um, I missed it, I'm sorry. It could be, it's fine. It, it could be about, um, uh, this one is your reaction to having the show air in the U.S. to go from Canada to the U.S. Oh, yeah. And now <laughs> the elections over there now. That's amazing. <laughs> I know that you are. It's a um, yeah, I think um, I wish that uh, again, um, we all learn from. Yeah, I, I'll say it. Canadians, <laughs> uh, we, we learn always like a lot of things and uh, yeah. Most important thing is like to yeah to accept others. 
which is amazing. Yeah, so it's a, it's a great to, to see the show in the US, of course. Thank you. Sammy? Yeah, I think the thing that I'd add too is like not to pat ourselves too much on the back. Um, and as Joe was sort of alluding to, he is like a little bit of a masochist. Um, and yeah, Hamza, you can pat yourself on the back. That's fine. But like us writers. No, like I'm a masochist too. So, But I mean, I think the, it, we've made progress with Muslim characters. We've made progress with uh, Arab American characters with transplant, but it's not good enough. Like we have to keep driving forward. We have to keep building change because we know there are consequences for, you know, uh, for bad portrayals, for demonizations of not just Muslims, but women, LGBTQ characters um, across the board. Um, so yeah, so lest we rest on our laurels, we need to keep driving forward and keep, you know, telling incredible stories. And, you know, I think the, the most, the most poignant thing I've watched recently is the Aaron Sorkin Chicago Seven thing. Um, and Aaron Sorkin was making a really good point. It's like little video I was watching. It's like stereotypes are just bad writing. You know, they're just bad writing. They're, they're lazy, it's lazy writing. So just don't write a stereotype. Don't write a stereotypical character who's white. Don't write one who's brown, who's Muslim, who's a female. Just making things specific, making them authentic. It means they'll resonate universally because people will recognize that. So, you know, we we all have to like keep driving forward. And, you know, I'm really heartened by the, you know, the community that's gathered uh, online. And, you know, I encourage everyone to, to reach out. You know, Joe and I are on Twitter. Hamza's on IG. Aisha's on Twitter and IG. Um, Khalid's on Twitter. Uh, so hit us up. Um, we need you as our like, uh, minions to keep you know keep driving change and keep affecting change and telling great stories the last question i have before i turn it over to sue and we close is is there a show or movie that you watched that made you feel seen because of diverse representations yeah i'll go first on this one um so it just got released in in the uk again but uh but earlier this year, um, Riz Ahmed with, uh, did a movie called Mogul Mowgli, and it should be available sometime later this year. And uh, it's like, I was irate when I saw this movie because it's everything that I wanna do. It's everything that I wanna do on film. It's just the most, the most accurate representation currently that I've ever seen about what it means to be an immigrant growing up in a, in a Western country, like to have moved someplace and like those cultural differences, those intergenerational conflicts, these religious questions that we do with the name of the movie is Mogul Mowgli. So I watched that movie and I was just like, all right, well, one, I, great, he did it already. And two, like, how do I go further than that? Because that's the, that's really the challenge. Um, he had this Q and A uh, on the day um, and he, and that's exactly what I said to him. I cussed him out for a little while for doing everything that I've ever wanted to do. And I just thanked him. But he said that I, I, I'm going to go this far. Your job is to go further. So exactly what Sammy was saying that like, even he's not going to rest on those laurels and to do a, a movie that makes somebody feel seen. It's actually a challenge to carry it further and to go even deeper in, into that. So, um, Hopefully the one, um, the one uh, somebody says, it's gonna be on Amazon soon. So Mogul Mowgli will be on Amazon soon. And hopefully the movie that I'll, uh, I'll see that, uh, that makes me feel seen after that is, is something that I'll make, you know. Joseph, Sammy or Hala, do any of you wanna talk about a show that made you feel seen? I know Joe's gonna say Hamilton and it probably makes sense to end with Joe talking about Hamilton. <laughs> But I mean, I can I can talk about just the power of representation, like Hamza was saying. Um, I'm a little bit older than Hamza, a lot older than Hamza. Um, but when I was a kid, we I grew up in a small town, um, and when Malcolm X came out, when Spike Lee's my, Malcolm X came out, uh, my dad literally drove us to Toronto to see the movie at the Old Cumberland Theater in the dead of winter, you know, coming out in January, and I remember. If you remember how the movie starts, it's with the, the footage of uh, the beating of Rodney King and then the American flag goes up in flames. And I was like, oh my God, what is this movie? This is incredible. Uh, and to see a Muslim character, an African-American 
Muslim character. It totally changed my worldview. It was the first time that I think I'd ever seen a Muslim character on screen. Um, and it, it just shattered my conception of what cinema was. So uh, yeah, so now on to Hamilton. Go ahead, Joseph. Well, I don't, I don't know if that play needs me to sing its praises any more than <laughs> it's already happened, but um, I mean, we, we, we all, we started talking about the show early on, um, everyone involved in it would talk about that play as finding different bits of inspiration and how people, um, whether it's representation or whether it's putting your, leaving it all on the floor in life and taking your shot. And we just, we, that for us, that, that was a well of inspiration. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> thank you. So Sue's gonna close out the event for us, but before I wanna thank all of you for being in conversation. It's been such a pleasure for me to get to talk to all of you. Joseph Kay, the executive producer and writer, Hamza Haq, actor, Dr. Khaled Al-Malaji, cultural consultant, Sami Khan, cultural producer. Congratulations on the success of the show. I look forward to watching the rest of the season. Sue. Thank you so thank much. You. I, thank you so much. The bumper sticker of tonight is stereotypical writing is lazy writing. That does need to be on a st uh, bumper sticker, Sammy. So thank you for that. Thank you everyone for being here today. The, uh, just It's been a energetic and, and heartwarming conversation. I was texting a few people from NBC and, and Lauren and I'm like, is it my imagination? Is the conversation going really well? And 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 it really did go well. And, and just from the bottom of my heart from, from I'm, I was not born in America. I'm an immigrant to America that did grow up in an America that really otherized me and tried to otherize me. And, and television and film was my shelter from the storm. Transplant is a dream come true. So thank you all for, for doing the panel today. And to our you know, viewing audiences, thank you for being here. I, I understand that we have audience from the um, viewers from America, from Canada, and also from Europe, and I'm sure from other countries. So thank you for that. Uh, Transplant is on Tuesdays at 10 p.m. Pacific and Eastern on NBC. The show returns on Tuesday, November 10th. And, and the episode you watched in, in, tips, in anticipation of tonight's um, panel will be aired on November 17th. And from the Muslim Public Affairs Council, um, just, a, just a request that if you are American and you are eligible to vote, please do so if you haven't done so already. The America that we all deserve depends on it. So thank you for everything and good night and best wishes. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Alaikum so salam. Alaikum salam. Amazing. Thank Rima, you. can we stop recording? Rima? Okay, I, I'm not, oh, here we go. <laughs>